And now is the time of the portion of the program that is produced by our sponsor, Wells Fargo. So please join me in welcoming on stage Michael DeVito, Executive Vice President and Head of Home Lending with Wells Fargo. Joining Michael on stage is Gary Acosta, co-founder and CEO of the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. Michael and Gary, the floor is yours. Thanks for being here. Well, good morning, everyone. And thanks, Brittany, for the introduction. We're grateful for that. Uh, we're here today because we firmly believe in the value of home ownership. We see it as foundational to helping communities and helping families build wealth and grow, uh, grow the country overall. Um, home ownership's a central part of the American story. It's, uh, it's been a central part of my family. I think it's probably been true for Gary as well and, and for many of you. And we know that we can advance these challenges and advance solutions by working together. And so uh, this was an opportunity to talk a little bit about some of the partnerships that we think are foundational to doing this. At Wells Fargo, we're focused on sustainable home ownership, uh, helping people not only achieve it, but sustain it over time. And, uh, and we think that's really critical, both in terms of the lending products we offer, but also in the work of our foundation. And we just recently announced uh, a, a commitment to uh, put 2% of our profits into our foundation uh, over time and a billion dollars to address housing affordability over the next six years, uh, including some challenge grants for uh, opportunities where we see new innovation coming in the form of uh, whether it's education or construction or ways to address some of the problems. So uh, I'm really pleased to invite Gary Acosta, who is the co-founder and CEO of the National Association of Hispanic Realtors. And so thanks for being here. It's good to be thanks here. Thanks for joining us. And let's just start by um, your membership is involved in working with families every single day yep. in communities around the country, helping them become homeowners. What are you hearing from your members and what's happening in the marketplace today? Well, first of all, Michael, uh, congratulations on the commitment and thank you for the invitation. Um, our members are real estate agents, brokers, uh, loan originators who are out there at the point of sale. And I can say with um, complete confidence, there's a lot of enthusiasm out there. Yeah. Uh, things have actually been well. As you may know, uh, the Hispanic home ownership rate has increased for four consecutive years. So a lot of transactions out there, agents are doing well financially. Um, and consumers, I would say, are probably as enthusiastic about home ownership as they have been historically. Um, I don't want to sound too Pollyannic, right. because there are challenges out there that we want to talk about and right, address. Of course. But things fundamentally have been very positive. So you've seen this growth in home ownership in the Hispanic community. Is there a end in that in sight? Do you see, is there any sense that maybe the appetite may start to wane? Or what's your view about uh, how, how you see the appetite for homeownership? Well, I mean, that's community? a great question. Um, I, I would say that uh, I don't see an end to the appetite. Uh, the desire for homeownership is, is hardwired in the Hispanic DNA, as we mm. like to say, because the family is really central to the Hispanic uh, experience. Um, there's quite, there's definitely challenges out there and we're talking a lot about the supply issues and people are feeling that, right? I talk to realtors all the time that say they have five qualified buyers to every one property that comes out in the market. So that actually, you know, can create challenges and some people sure. can lose, uh, you know, the belief that they can actually achieve home ownership. But one of the things that's really important to note about the Hispanic community in particular is its youth. Right. right, and even though there's a substantial gap between the Hispanic home ownership rate and the overall home ownership rate, that gap is closing because Hispanics are really aging into those prime home buying years right now, as I think you know. Yeah, no, I think that's right. You uh, you recently released your study on uh, Hispanic wealth report, and share with us some of the insights in that report and what you're observing about the Hispanic community and what's growing in their wealth and the way they're approaching home ownership and other things. Yeah, so, um, you know, back in 2012, as we were sort of, you know, at the tail end of the crisis, I had a conversation with uh, Henry Cisneros. I think you know Henry yes. as well, former HUD secretary. 
And a study had just come out that showed that Hispanics may have lost up to two-thirds of their actual uh, median household wealth during that four-year span, which is obviously devastating. So it really kind of shifted our thinking at NARF um, around that home ownership is more of a means to an end. Mm -hmm. And clearly it is a driver of wealth uh, for the Latino community as well as just the general population out there. Right. So it helped us launch something that we call the Hispanic Wealth Project. Uh, with a goal to triple Hispanic wealth over a 10-year span. You guys have been a great partner in that regard uh, with a commitment of $125 billion in terms of mortgages because home ownership is a cornerstone of that effort. Uh, there's a focus on entrepreneurship as well as savings and investment. Right. Um, and there hasn't been a lot of data really tracking wealth uh, amongst the Hispanic community in general. Uh, so we wanted to start to report on that and track that and help sort of, I think, identify issues that the community, that the industry, uh, that government can start to recognize as being an issue. We've learned that um, home ownership is as important as we thought it was, okay. you know, when we first uh, started this process. Uh, but savings and investment, entrepreneurship, as you know, Hispanics are creating new businesses at a faster rate than the general population as well. Um, so it's been a really terrific experience uh, to really start to understand the context that home ownership plays in the overall quality of life for Hispanics and, and the country in general. Yeah, I mean, there's some, some feedback that the Hispanic community is serving as an engine of the economy at the moment. What's your sense of that? What are the risks to that? Where do you think the challenges are there? So it's interesting. Um, Steve Forbes, uh, Forbes magazine, uh, definitely not necessarily a guy that has been accused of being, you know, too, um, you know, focused on minority communities historically, uh, a real capitalist in general. Yeah. It recently tagged the Hispanic community as being the Calvary that's coming over the hill that is gonna save our economy and continue growth um, and the well-being of the U.S. economy. Uh, so that was actually an interesting sort of dynamic. Um, you know, I, it, it really prompts me to kind of identify something that I think is important, and that is this is not a niche anymore, no. right, that we're talking about. Minority markets, Hispanic markets in particular, um, you know, when most people kind of think about that, when you see forums like this, they think about it in terms of you know, this is a, a philanthropic effort that we should be focused on. Uh, this is a compliance issue for financial institutions. Yeah. Um, you know, I support things like affordable housing goals, CRA, and so forth. I think it's an important piece of it. But you guys in particular, being a leader, have really helped the industry understand that this is a growth opportunity. This is core to your business. Um, and when people view it, when institutions view it as... Um, a growth and profit opportunity, then there's more investment that really starts to happen there. And that's a tipping point that, you know, we want to see continue moving forward. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that because I think for us, we see it as this is a core constituency. These are core consumers, yep. members of our customer base who we want to serve, right? And I think that uh, together we're finding ways to do we, that. We call it the new mainstream. Yeah, I, th I think that's, that, that may be a fair way to describe it. Um, so to that point, what... What can institutions like ours and like others like us, what do you think we need to do differently to help advance the solutions here? Well, I mean, there's several things. I mean, if I had uh, a magic wand and I could pick only one, I would say the best thing that you could do is do your best to diversify your workforce from top to bottom. Um, there are nuances in serving these communities, uh, the Hispanic community in particular, Having people inside your organization in managerial roles, the board level, and at the point of sale who understand those nuances, who come from those communities, is probably the one thing that financial institutions can do to really change that power paradigm for them. It makes a difference. Yes. It, it makes a difference. The conversations around the table are different. The thinking is different. So that's great. Uh, we are almost right on the number here. So I want to just thank the Hill for the opportunity to participate in this event. Thank Gary for his partnership and uh, engagement. And so thanks very much for it's the time. It's been a pleasure. Thank it's, you very uh, much. It's great to be together. Great to be here. So thank you thank very you. much. Appreciate it.